Welcome back to Modern Ham where we are connected in new old ways. Today I'm going to be building a 2 meter Yagi out of scraps that I found around my yard. Stay tuned. So I just moved into a new house and now I have friends about 5 or 6 miles away. If you guys have been watching my channel, I've been into this packet radio stuff and I'm shifting into TCP IP networking. And I need a good reliable link with my friend. He has a high noise floor where he's at. There's a lot of interference in the air. I need a Yagi to punch through that interference on two meters so that we can form that TCP IP link over packet radio. I really don't want to spend the money on a Yagi. Now that I have a area where I can build things, I decided, hey, why not look around and see what's, what's available to us. And this goes back to when I started this channel, this is all about doing things cheaply, right? Now, and it doesn't mean that it's bad quality, it just means that there's things in the amateur radio that we don't have to spend money on. If you have the ability to, you know, cut some wire, maybe do some soldering, zip tie, tape, uh, maybe even something to saw a board or PVC pipe, you can basically build all kinds of different antennas. And if I was to buy a commercial antenna or an antenna for two meter Yagi, it would probably be somewhere between $70 to $150, depending on how nice I want it to be. With this method, I can actually cut that Yagi to the exact specific frequency uh, that I want it to be resonant on, that I know I'm going to be using it for, just for my friend and I to be able to form that link. I actually did scout out already before the video. It's what kind of gave me the idea for the video. I want to show you guys exactly what I saw and we're gonna see if we can make something out of it. So, see what happens. You can see where the previous owner, they actually put up this fence with, I don't know if that's chicken wire or what kind of wire it is, but, but you'll see right over here in the corner, take a look at this. And I've seen designs for tape measure Yagi's and this and that, but I don't think I've ever seen this stuff. And we got some boards over here too. With all of this right here, I think we can take this, and we can turn that into a decent Yagi for free from stuff that's kind of laying in the woods here. All right, so welcome to the garage. I brought in a piece of that chicken wire, whatever it is, some type of galvanized steel, I hope. Um, and so I'm thinking I'll use that for the elements of the antenna. And this isn't gonna be a traditional video where this is my complete design. I've already made it, I'm making it again, giving it to other people. This is gonna be me just kind of going through the thought process of uh, building one of these. I've never actually built a Yagi. Um, there's plenty of really good guides out there for people who have built, you know, tape measure things and stuff like that. But I just wanted to show you guys that it's not that difficult to go out, find the parts that you might need, uh, you know, around your property or at your local store and, and build something that, that's gonna get you on the air. This is coming from a guy who doesn't build antennas. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. So I did collect some materials, um, basically the chicken wire from outside. There's also some type of maybe baseboard, or something that was left here in the garage when I bought the house. There's a couple other like two by fours and boards on the wall. A lot of it's like leftover construction material. So I'm gonna see what I can hodgepodge together here and see if we can't make this antenna. Now I already did do the calculations. I will show you on the screen basic. So I got our, um, I measured our driven element for 144.915, which is gonna be the frequency that my friend and I use for our packet link. So I'm gonna try to create this antenna for that specific frequency. So at uh, two driven elements of 19 and rounded up the four eighth of an inch or half an inch uh, for each driven element should be a half wave uh, dipole for two meters ish. So I added 5% onto that to get the, uh, the reflector length. So that turned the reflector to 40 inches and 11 16th and they took 5% off of that um, driven length, total driven length, to get the director length, which is going to be 36 um, and 13 sixteenths of an inch. I'm pretty sure that rounds somehow. The distance between my elements is going to be 1 foot, 4 inches, and 9 30, 30 tooths of an inch, 30 seconds of an inch. Hey, it, I'm a first time homeowner. This is the first time I actually get to build things, so take it easy on me. That, that's basically it. That's actually all we need to know. That gives us, if I do about three length, uh, three feet on the boom, that'll give us plenty of room for all the elements and then maybe a way to mount it. So I have here, I have a drill, I have some wire, some zip tie, just some random odd things that 
hopefully will help me get this thing built kind of on the fly and you guys can kind of see the process as I go kind of what I'm thinking and let's get to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and pick up this chicken wire and I think we basically know the lengths that we need to do to get this thing at least the three elements right. So I got one piece of this cut off. I'm gonna check the length of it and see what I can do with it here. So it's about 40, well, it's more than 40 inches, about 42 inches. So we can like, we can use this as the director. We can actually cut it up and use it as two drivens. Got these little nubs in there. I don't know if that's probably gonna affect the antenna. <laughs> see if I can't cut those off. I guess they're gonna stay on there. We'll see what happens. I'm sure it'll affect the radiation somehow, but we're making an antenna out of garbage. So I'm not looking for anything to be completely perfect. All right, go ahead and make that cut. So there's our first end of the driven element. First part of the dipole, very cool. All right, so we got our two ends of the dipole, the two driven elements. These are gonna to attach to the shield and then the core of the coax. Next, we're gonna go ahead and cut out the uh, reflector which is going to be the longest part, the longest element. That should take care of all of the elements. I found this thing, it might work. It needs to be at least three feet. Not really sure what it is, but I don't think any of this stuff is conductive. I think it's just pure wood. So I did say I want at least three feet for the boom. This comes out to a little over 35 inches. That's gonna work fine. It does need a little cleaned up, but so do the elements. So the elements are actually gonna probably need uh, alcohol cleaned and then sanded where the connections are going to be made just in case if there's some weird non-conductive plating it's going to be removed and uh, you know you get conductivity this board i'm going to go ahead and uh, probably wipe it down as well just to have that clean i think that board is going to be really good for the boom i think that's going to work great for holding those elements in place it's not super sturdy when you take the whole length but if you just take one specific part, I think it'll do fine outside. Taking my elements, uh, and I've kind of like shaved off the ends. I don't know if the camera will focus on those, but I just shaved off the ends to make sure that they were bare. So what I'm gonna do is just take that baseboard and probably just, you know, somehow screw it in or something like that right there. We'll take the, um, the nib and I'm gonna mark off where I'm gonna have to cut on this baseboard for each of these elements. All right, there's our three element supports. Our boom's done. Our radiating elements, or our two radiating elements and our director and reflector finished. So now, time to strip the coax. Cut the end off of this perfectly good coax. And we're gonna try to dig out the shield and dig out the, uh, the copper. The core. All right, so we have our shield. We have our core. Great. So that's exposed. Basically, we're ready to go ahead and start drilling, hammering, whatever we got to do to get these boards together. All right, so the camera died, so I had to do a little bit off screen. 
So let me go ahead and catch you guys up on what's going on. I'm taking the boom and I've measured out the point to 20% of the wavelength that I intended this be resonant on is gonna be the space between the elements. So I've marked those with my nib and I've actually already prepared the elements. So I went ahead and um, let's see, I think this right here is the reflector. And what I've done is just um, taken zip ties and just put it, this is actually the, uh, the driven element. So there's the separation here. So all I've done was take zip ties and just get that nice and straight on this board. And the same thing with the reflector and the, uh, the director. Uh, both of these are basically just that chicken wire or whatever fence post that is zip tied onto these boards. So just to be transparent, I was trying to build this thing so that I could use all the materials laying around that I have. Unfortunately, I did not have screws, and since I'm putting the wood to wood, I really wanted to have screws to get the, the element supports on the boom. So I did have to make a trip out to go get some screws. It is what it is. But uh, other than that, this is the stuff I have laying around. So I'm going to go ahead and get those elements actually screwed onto the boom. We're going to stick, normally designs have this as a copper piece, but this is a matching piece that we're going to use to short the coax core and the uh, shield as soon as it comes into the antenna and divides up uh, between the two elements. There's arguments on the internet if that is a capacitance thing or if it's an inductance thing. And I'm sure you guys in the comments can let me know, but I'm going to go ahead and like with the other pieces, I'm going to just shave off the outer shell of this to make sure that it's going to have conductivity. So I know the core of the core axe is going to go over under one part and then the shield is going to go under the other. Now for the coax, to add some strain relief, I kind of want to just drill a hole straight through this board. All right, so I didn't want to have to do this, but I am going to have to break out the solder. So, oh well. It's just that these connections on this thing are not as, as good as I'd like them to be. Another reason I didn't want to solder is because I, I have a very thin gauge solder wire and that's it. I don't have any thick wire with me right now. And uh, this is definitely one of those projects where a lot of flux and some thick gauge wire would have done me very well. I think at the very least we at least have continuity. So you guys can kind of see what I was working on here. This is the matching unit. Uh, the shield's going to come in right here. The core comes in over here to this element, to that element. And as far as I can see, I think all this looks electrically sound. I'm going to go ahead and tape everything up. So in the end, uh, it looks pretty janky. The beams are definitely not straight. It's probably not the exact length that it needs to be. But our objective was to create a Yagi out of a junk, a pile of junk in the yard. Uh, you know what? We're going to see what the results are. I do expect a little bit of tuning, but I am curious on where it is resonant at right now. So right now, I wanted to use this on 144.915. So it's at a 2.72 SWR right now. Not great. 2.75. I'm going to go ahead and start trimming the edges. Come back and check, make sure I'm on the right track here. 2.77. Did that help us out any? Ah, uh, I think we're going up, huh? Oh yeah, of course, if we're trimming it down. All right, so I, if we're trimming the antenna down, it means we're going to increase the frequency because the, the wavelength's getting shorter as we're trimming it, the resonant. So we don't need to trim it, but we'll just go ahead and maybe adjust that little pin to see if that can't help us out some. I think that actually just increased it too. Let me do it one more time to be sure. So clipping the matching unit seems to be uh, causing our SWR to increase on the frequency we wanted it to work on. Let's try to spread it out some. Okay, so that's actually bringing the resonant frequency down. 
Uh, I mean, we're so far off target, we'd almost have to basically make it a pancake. I think that's basically as good as I'm going to get. Let's take a look at the 40 meter band, or the 2 meter band, and see what it looks like here. I made a great antenna for, uh, for a simplex, huh? Yeah, that's about as good as I'm going to get it. I said a 1.67 SWR at 145, 460. So, I mean, it, it'll work on 2 meters. This is uh, an inline SWR reader, and I'm going to transmit at 144.915. So 2.30 SWR, and I, that's really almost with the antenna sitting on the ground. Um, so that's, that's actually not too bad. And moving up to 146.520, once I transmit, I get a 1.51 SWR uh, with connected to the radio. So that's actually uh, not a bad deal out of a garbage antenna. I mean, all in all, I think it was successful. It wasn't exactly what the frequency I wanted to cut it for, but uh, that was my first Yagi build, and I was building it out of basically junkyard parts. What could have went better is I could have left more length to compensate for on that driven element. Uh, I thought I gave it plenty of extra uh, room, but there was something that I didn't account for in there, obviously, uh, and that caused the resonance to be a little higher than I thought, but it can still be used for my purposes. I just got to be careful not to choose repeater frequencies. Uh, but anyways, I really appreciate everybody for watching. Thanks for joining on my, me on my first Yagi build, and I hope this inspires people. Uh, you saw that I got a, a 1.6 something SWR on an antenna made from stuff from the yard. You know, I did have to go to Lowe's for some screws, but check it out. Like, you know, if you have some zip ties or a little bit of wood and a saw or what, you know, whatever, you can, you can put something together, and I just wanted to show people that uh, while I try to build something to communicate with my friends. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you. 73 to everybody.